it's Shai Lin, and today's Sewing Adventures is going to be pattern drafting, specifically for my body shape, which is a little on the plus size and definitely on the busty end. So for this video, I'm going to go over three different pattern drafting methods that I have found. The first method is the Michael Rohr method, or the vintage method, from 1961. I found this online and I printed it out, and I will link it down below where I found it. Um, and basically I chose this method because it is highly recommended, I guess, in the vintage community, but I'm not sure if it's recommended in the busty or curvy community. So I might be biased in looking into this method, but because I like vintage silhouettes, I'm going to try it anyway. The second method I'm going to go over is the Natalie Bray method. Now this method I found again online, and I will link it down below as a PDF. I just printed it out. This method was highly recommended in the busty and curvy groups that I'm in, so I have high hopes for it because a lot of people said that because the method works off of ratios rather than standards, hopefully that means that it will work for a bustier or a curvier body. And then finally, the third method that I'm going to go over is the Winifred Aldrich method from the Metric Pattern Cutting for Women's Wear book. Um, this book I bought a couple years ago because a lot of my fashion design friends have recommended it. It's a book that they all have to use in school. So um, I decided that I was going to order it and I've just never looked into it <laughs> since I ordered it. I've also heard good things about this method in terms of it being a good method for pattern drafting in general. So hopefully this again works out. Now, in this video, I thought it would be fun to rate each system based on whether or not it's busty friendly or plus size friendly. I'm not going to teach you how to draft the method just because it takes a very long time, and this is also the first time that I have used each method, so I don't think I am the person to teach you. Though, if you're interested, feel free to comment down below and I can film a video of me going through the process with my measurements, of course. So without further ado, let's go over the rating system that I have come up with. So the very first thing that we're going to rate from a scale of 1 to 5 is the drafting method. I'm going to rate it based on whether or not it's beginner friendly, 5, or if it's very advanced and pretty difficult. And then the second way I'm going to rate this is the amount of time it takes to draft. I think because I've never done any of these drafting methods before, it is easy for me to compare how much time it took for each method because I've never done any of them. So I can't possibly do any of them faster. It's possible that I could go faster as I go along, or maybe not, but hopefully it doesn't get skewed as I go from the first method to the last method. But on the scale of one to five, one is going to be, it's going to take four or more hours, so over half of your day. Five is gonna be, it, it's really quick and it's probably gonna take you like an hour. I doubt any of these methods are going to be a perfect five, but who knows? The third thing that I'm going to rate is, is it busty friendly? So on a scale of one to five, I'm going to give it a one if it requires a full bust adjustment and a five on if it requires minimal adjustments and it doesn't touch the bust area. The fourth thing I'm going to rate is, is it plus size friendly? So. I'm going to give it a 1 on if it's not plus size friendly for whatever reason, and then I'm going to give it a 5 on if it seems to be an inclusive drafting method. And then finally the last thing I'm going to rate it on is on my personal fit and whether or not I would try it again or whether or not I'm going to continue with the alterations. So I'm going to give it a 1 if it requires a lot of alterations and I probably don't want to touch it again, and a 5 on if it requires minimal alterations or it just fits perfectly. So having said that, let's go over the very first thing I'm going to rate, which is drafting. And for this the whole thing, I will include my measurements on the side here so you can see and compare what I'm working with. So the very first method is the vintage method from 1961. This method uses nine measurements. And again, I'm gonna put it right here for you so you can compare and see what I'm working with. The directions for this is pretty simple to follow. It follows a point-to-point -point based system 
which basically means that it goes from point A to B and you're following it based off of your measurements or the measurements it tells you. So when I finished drafting this bodice pattern, I noticed at the end of drafting the second and third method that this pattern only drafts down to the waistline instead of down to the hips. So I actually had to go back and find um, the method to continue and create what they call the hip foundations block. And to get to that part in the book, it tells you to take the bodice block that you created and then it actually has you rotate the waist dart out so you also have a side dart. That way you have a smaller waist dart to continue down to your hips. Having said all of that, I give the Michael Rohr Vintage Method a 3 out of 5. And the reason for that is while the directions were very easy to follow, I had to go back and fix the original bodice block that I created to add on to the hip foundations portion and doing a dart rotation to get that extra side dart might not be fully beginner friendly. So that's why I give it a 3 out of 5. Now for the Natalie Bray method, this method uses seven measurements, which I found really strange because that's a lot less measurements that I would assume that I would need. So the directions require you to use your own measurements as well as use a chart of ratios. This chart of ratios is used throughout the drafting process and to be honest, it was really difficult to follow. Good lord, what in the fucking, like, star measuring shit are you doing? You look like you're plotting out the universe over here. I don't know what I'm doing. Look at this, it looks like you're trying to navigate boat in the 1800s. doing? <laughs> and then once you create the bodice piece, it just gives you kind of vague directions on how to do the waist shaping, which in a way I find to be pretty fair considering most people's waist measurements are going to be different but also a little difficult if you are a beginner. Having said all of that, I give this bodice block a 2 out of 5 in terms of difficulty. It was very difficult to follow and I only found out after I had drafted the pattern that this isn't really recommended for beginners so that's why I had a hard time with it. And then finally, the Winifred Aldrich method. This method uses 12 measurements, and the directions are similar to the Vintage method, which is a point-to-point -point system. Again, that just means that it tells you to mark a point, like point A, take a specific measurement, like your shoulder seam, and then make a line from point A to point B from that measurement. So it is pretty simple to follow. However, the original bodice block like the Natalie Bray method doesn't include way shaping. You actually have to go to a whole different section in the book to add the waist portion. Having said all of that, I give this a 4 out of 5. And that's because it is pretty easy, but it is flawed in that you have to know to go to a different section of the book to finish the waist shaping portion of the block. Now we're going over to the next rating, which is the time it took and whether or not it's worth it. So for the first method, because the directions were really easy to follow, even with having to add on the hip foundations portion, I give it a 5 out of 5 because it was very easy to follow, which means it took little to no time at all to complete the bodice block. For the Natalie Bray method, I give this a 3 out of 5. Because I found it so difficult, it did take me a long time, and like I said, this is a more advanced method, so that's possibly why. But basically, I had to go back and double check my work, double check the measurements, so on and so forth. And then finally, for the Winifred Aldrich method, I give it a 4 out of 5. Because much like the vintage method, it was really easy to follow. However, it wasn't as fast as that method was, so it did get like a point docked for being a little bit slower. So before we go on to the fitting portion, I do want to make some notes about the whole drafting process and some things that I've noted while I was drafting it. For the vintage method, the arm's eye seemed really large and I noticed that that was because it uses the bust measurement to create that line across and then shape the arm's eye. 
So when I measured out the arm's eye, it ended up being 21 and 3 quarters of an inch. And my arm's eye measurement would be 19 and a half inches. So I know ahead of time that I'm going to have issues at the armpit. And then for the Natalie Bray method, the arm's eye is very, very curved. But I have had experience with that when sewing my partner's suit before. And it seems to be a way to adjust the fit at your chest without adding a side dart. I decided to just measure the arm side just in case and that came out to be 20 and a half inches. It does mean with my measurement being 19 and a half inches that I will have to take it in a little bit as well. And then for the Winifred Aldrich method, so when I measured that arm side it ended up being 18 and a half inches. So it might have a little bit of puckering at the armpit because it is a little bit smaller than my arm's eye measurement. I'm also worried about this massive shoulder dart making it potentially come to a point at the bust and also creating such a steep shoulder slope. But I won't find that out until I try it on. So those are all of my thoughts about the drafting method as well as some concerns that I think that I'm going to have based off of my sewing experiences. And now, a message from our sponsor. Smudge, come here. I believe Smudge has been in my videos before. This time he is still not paid uh, sponsor of this video. Smudge would like you to know that in the past year, I have also been working on the Asian Sewist Collective podcast. This podcast is a group of Asian sewists who have come together and created a space for us to be able to talk about different things, whether it's our Asian identities intersecting with our sewing experiences, or even interviewing other Asian sewists who are pattern designers, quilters, so on and so forth. So I will link the Asian Sewist Collective podcast down below. Me and Smudge would really like for you to take a listen. Alright. Continuing on with the rest of the video. So for this next section, I'm going to go over the fit and I'm going to determine based off of how it fits me from the first iteration, if it's busty friendly, plus size friendly, and of course, my rating on how it fits me. So for the vintage method, it fits exactly how I would anticipate a regular bodice pattern to fit me, which I feel like means it's a little bit more standardized. Um, it's not as fitted as the other two, but that's because it adds two inches of ease at the bust, which then continues down to the waist and the hips. I also found the bust points pretty high on this bodice piece, and I don't know if that's because my bust just lays lower, if it's larger and it's just in the wrong location, or if because this is a vintage block, it requires me to wear vintage foundation wear, which I don't have. And then of course, as suspected, the arm's eye is large and I will have to take it in right there. So is the Michael Rohr method busty friendly? I say one out of five. That is a no for me. And the reason I say that is because this method relies heavily on the bust measurement. And you can see that in the arm's eye portion of the block. Um, it was much too large for me because my bust was large. It assumed that Maybe my arms were also large, which is not really the case. I anticipate that that means for my fellow busty sewists, you will also have the same issue if you were to draft this block and have to take it in at your armhole. So one out of five, this is not busty friendly. Is the Michael Rohr vintage method plus size friendly? I give this a one out of five. Again, that's a really bad rating, but it's because during the drafting method, it requires you to draft the waist darts to always be nine and a half inches smaller than your bust. And that doesn't change regardless of how big or small your bust is. It always assumes that your waist measurement is smaller by nine and a half inches. That's just not true for most people, whether you are not plus size or plus size. On top of that, it also assumes that your hip measurement is exactly the same as your bust measurement, which, again, not always true regardless of what size you are. So I say this is not plus size friendly 
and really not friendly to those who don't have an hourglass shape. And then of course, my rating for personal fit. I give it a 2 out of 5. Since it's really loose, I can easily alter it. However, because I have to mess around with the bust darts and add another dart at the armhole and then potentially rotate that dart out and put it into the side seam, I think that's much too much work for creating a bodice block that fits my body. So because of all of that, I'm giving it a pretty low rating there as well. And now for the fit of the Natalie Bray method. That mid-shoulder dart made it fit really well in the overbust portion of the bodice, but weirdly the waist dart right here was super close. So I had to go back in the directions and check to see if I've messed up the waist dart. I didn't. The waist dart location is based off of a fourth of your chest width measurement. That means that you're using this measurement right here to determine where the dart goes under your bust. And as you can see, my bust goes out a little bit to the sides more than my chest does up here. So it doesn't really go in the right spot. Having said all of that, is the Natalie Bray method busty friendly? I give it a 4 out of 5. While it does seem to fit really well in the overbust portion, it seems to be flawed in the waist measurement. Now, there is an easy way to fix that, knowing all of this information, which is instead of using the chest width measurement, you're going to want to use your bust point measurement. Um, and that way you can determine exactly where you want that dart to go underneath your bust. Now, is the Natalie Bray method plus size friendly? I give this a 2 out of 5. And that's because you're using the table of average measurements and proportion. This chart doesn't even include my measurements, and I consider myself to be on the smaller end of plus size, slash more in the mid size range. While there is an obvious pattern on how the ratios go up every other size, I find that that makes it really inaccessible for plus size people because that means we have to do additional work and guess what those ratios are supposed to be for our bodies. So that's why I didn't give it a higher score. And then finally, personal fit. How do I think it fits on me? I give this a three and a half out of five. And I give it that because it does seem to fit me pretty well, but I do have to make some alterations. So I know in the future what I have to do. However, this is a three out and a half out of five because this is my first time and I'm gonna have to make all of these changes. And finally, this is the Winifred Aldrich method and how it fits on me. This is immediately my favorite fit out of the three. It is similar to the Natalie Bray method where the shoulder point dart made the upper bust fit pretty well, but I also didn't have issues with the bust points like I did with the Natalie Bray method. Is the Winifred Aldrich method busty friendly? I gave this a 5 out of 5. Because it requires you to use the shoulder to waist method, this takes into consideration how much your bust protrudes from your body and that really helps when you're a bustier person. Is the Winifred Aldrich method plus size friendly? I give this a 3 out of 5. There are two standard measurements that you have to use during the whole drafting method and that is the dart measurement and the arm side depth. This is all given to you in a size chart that only goes up to a size 24. So if you are larger than a size 24, you're kind of SOL in these two measurements that you need to finish the draft. Now, I, ha I couldn't figure out what the dart measurement is based off of, so I can't give you any tips there. However, the arm's eye depth measurement is actually something that you can measure instead of just using a chart. So as long as you take that arm's eye depth method on your own, then the only thing that you have to worry about is that dart method, which again is why I give this a 3 out of 5. So how did I think about the Winifred Aldrich method as it fits me? I give it a 4 out of 5, and the reason it doesn't get a 
perfect score is because I do still have to make alterations as expected. I already anticipated that it would have some pulling at the fabric at the armhole, which you can see right there. And then also I have some drag lines there where you can tell that I need to take up the length because it is too long for my short torso. And I've already done these in this fit here. You can see where I have pinned up all of the excess fabric and the fit is starting to already look better. So to recap, here are all of the ratings that I have given each pattern drafting method. The Roar Vintage method had a very low score of 12 out of 25, and that's because it just wasn't busty or plus size friendly. The Natalie Bray method had a score of 14 and a half out of 25, and I think the biggest reason it had such a low score was because it was so difficult for me to draft on my own and it took so much time. And then of course I had to dock some an extra point or two because it wasn't fully plus size friendly. The Winifred Aldrich method had a 20 out of 25. Now I have heard some people say that they don't like this method because it's too standardized, but I found it to be more well-rounded than the other methods. So I think that it is a little bit more accessible to a wider range of bodies. Obviously, I am but one person, so if you were to try all of these methods on your own, you may have different results and think that one of the other methods works out better for you. I do hope that this video helps you determine whether or not you even want to draft your own bodice block and whether or not you want to attempt one of these over another. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave a comment down below. While I'm not an expert on these methods, I will try my best. Or maybe one of the other viewers will be able to answer your question from their experience. If you have a specific pattern drafting method that you have tried or and liked over any of these, please let me know down below. I'm very interested in trying other drafting methods. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel. Happy sewing! Me and Smudge would really like... No! Don't burn! Good boy.